Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us here on the program where we cover the most interesting live trials and legal stories in the news today. Big trial to cover, so let's get started. Okay, what a start that was. Let's break it down right now. Joining me is psychiatrist Dr. Carol Lieberman and attorney Terry Austin. Good morning to you both. Thanks for coming on. Uh, Terry, let's start with you. Good day for the state, bad day for the state. I mean, it was their first attempt to try to tell their story to the jury. So how do you think they did in day one? I think it was a strong argument, Jesse. I think that, you know, searching on the internet, how to kill your baby is powerful information and it leaves a trail. So, you know, I've heard the defense opening too, and I go back and forth on this one, but the prosecution made a very powerful statement there. Now, doctor, let's break this down. If, in fact, she did murder her baby, you know, we're not even talking about a situation where she squeezed her too hard or something like that. If she actually intended to kill this baby, who does this? What is the psychological makeup of somebody that would kill a newborn? Uh, someone who is severely um, mentally ill with one diagnosis or another, perhaps borderline, perhaps, I, I mean, we know she has uh, an eating disorder and, and supposedly she was only treated sort of on and off for two years with a psychologist back a while a while ago, um, which, you know, clearly wasn't enough. But um, yeah, it shows someone who is disconnected from humanity. That's a frightening thought. Uh, let's continue on more with the state and we'll hear what they say. They've portrayed this defendant in a certain light. And then a little bit later on, we're going to play you what the defense said because they had an entirely alternative theory of the defendant. So let's continue on with the state. But Terry, here's the problem for the state. They make a great argument, but they hit her with murder. They hit her with manslaughter. They hit her with child endangerment because correct me if I'm wrong, they're not even entirely sure what happened. We don't even have a definitive cause of death, correct? I mean, that idea that we don't have a full picture of what happened to the baby because of the, uh, there's a lack of that kind of forensic data that we need, that's a problem for them, right? That's a big problem for them, Jesse. You know, the prosecution said she didn't plan and she didn't prepare, but the question you raised is exactly on point. But did she murder the baby? They have no forensic evidence saying that it was a murder. They know the child died but they cannot prove that they died, you know, that she died by the hands of this young girl. So the prosecution has a hard way to go here. Well, I mean, that's why it's so important what her statements were before the death of baby Annabelle and maybe even more importantly afterwards, the comments, the texts, the photos that she took. It's a whole different story about a woman who really didn't want to have this baby and was happy to get her, uh, her body back. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, doctor, I want to go to you for a second. Let's take a step back. The idea of a young woman, uh, a teenager, giving birth to this child, and we heard testimony yesterday from her OBGYN OB who confirmed the pregnancy, you know, she was hit with a truck. You know, she just did not expect this. She said she wasn't prepared to have this baby. What should we be thinking about a teenager in this position? You know, of course, these days, a lot of teenagers take that same risk, but then they, their baby doesn't usually end up dead. Um, you know, one of the things is that you could look at what she did and didn't do even before the baby was born. That You know, she's saying that the baby was stillborn and that she didn't kill it. But um, by not going, following up with the doctors and acting like she wasn't pregnant, not taking vitamins, not, you know, doing things that people normally do to have a healthy baby, in a sense, I don't know if they're going to go down that route. It, it, you know, doesn't, that wouldn't be murder per se, I mean, directly. Um, but she was, in a sense, murdering her baby all along, even if it was born, stillborn. Right. You know, one could say that that was because her la of her lack of maternal um, care. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because, Terry, this is the part that I think the defense is going to have the most trouble with. Because here's the problem. They're not disputing the fact that this girl was surprised and that she didn't really want the baby at first. So what am I supposed to believe? This is a young girl who never wanted this baby. And just by sheer luck, by the grace of luck, the baby dies at that point. You know, she never wanted it, but she was never going to kill the baby. And then just so happens that the baby's born stillborn. This is just a stroke of luck for her. That's the problem that I'm, I have for the defense. 
Yeah, I agree, Jesse. I think the question the jury is going to have to answer is, did she take any steps towards killing this child? So, you know, when did she first become pregnant? When did she first learn of her pregnancy? Was she doing anything subsequent to learning about the pregnancy to hurt the infant? Or was she simply, you know, just living her life and, and not acting in a parental way? And, and was that, you know, manslaughter or did she murder the child? So I think the jury's going to have a lot of questions here as to what was her motive, what was her intent here. It would have been a totally different case if she finds out she's pregnant, she's happy, she's excited, she buys all the supplies, and then the baby dies. But the fact that she didn't want the baby in the very beginning, it's just too coincidental that then the baby's stillborn. That's one argument that I think the defense is going to have trouble with. Um, doctor, you had mentioned something earlier about the eating disorder, and the defense brought that up. We didn't know about it. They brought it up that she has this eating disorder. That's why her body, she takes pictures of her body. It's such a big factor in this case. What's the point they were trying to make? Uh, um... <laughs> You know, trying to to explain it, in other words, um, not as related to wanting to kill the baby, but that this is how she has been all along. I mean, that's what they were saying, that she takes these kinds of pictures. And, um, you know, and, and that is an angle to this whole thing. Not just the, you know, there are certain uh, symptoms and reasons why someone has eating disorders, you know, needing a need for control, uh, perfectionism. And, of course, there's that whole angle where they're trying to say that the family was very intent on um, on appearances and so on, but um, you know it, it's it's also there's a narcissism that um, right. is floating around that people are thinking well yeah she's taking pictures of her body because uh, you know she just cares about how she looks and she's a cheerleader and you know it's all about vanity. And I don't know if it helped the defense to bring that point up because. One way you can look at it, yeah, she really cared about her physical appearance, so much so that maybe she never wanted to be pregnant and she never wanted to have this baby. That's one way of looking at it. Not saying that's where we're going to go, but that's one view of it. Now, we're going to take a break. I'm keeping a careful eye on the courtroom feed. Maybe when we come back, we'll go live. If not, we have a lot more to break down from day one of this trial. Stay tuned.